Second Kings chapter 16. In the seventeenth year of Pekah, son of Amaliah, Ahaz, son of <coughs> King Jotham of Judah, <coughs> began to reign. Ahaz was twenty years old, and he began to reign. And he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, but he did not do what was right in the eyes of Adonai his God, as his father David had done. Instead, he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and even made his son pass through the fire, like the abominations of the nations whom Adonai had dispossessed before Benai Israel. He offered sacrifices and burned incense on high places, on the hills, and under every leafy tree. Then King Rezin of Aram, and Pekah, son of King Ramaliah of Israel marched against Jerusalem to wage war. They besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, King Rezin of Aram recovered Elath for Aram and drove out the Jews of, out of Elath. And then the Edomites came to Elath and settled there to this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to King Tiglath Pileser of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up and deliver me from the hand of the king Aram and from the hand of king of Israel, who are rising up against me. Ahaz took and silver and gold that was found in the house of Adonai and in the treasuries of the royal palace, and sent them as a present to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria responded to him. The king of Assyria marched up against Damascus and captured it and deported its inhabitants as captives to Ker and put Rezin to death. Ahaz remodels the temple. Then king Ahaz went to Damascus to meet king tiglath Pileser of, uh, Pil of Assyria. Pilliser of Assyria, and saw the altar that was at Damascus. So King Ahaz sent Urijah the Kohen, the pattern of the altar and its model needed for its construction. Then Urijah the Kohen put an altar according to all the King Ahaz sent from Damascus, and Urijah the Kohen finished it by the time the King Ahaz returned from Damascus. When the king came back from Damascus and saw the altar, the king approached the altar and went up to it. Then he burned his burnt offering and his grain offering. <laughs> poured his drink offering and sprinkled the blood of his fellowship offering on the altars. For the bronze altar that was before Adonai, he moved it from the forefront of the house from between the, his altar and the house of Adonai and put it on the north side of his own altar. Then King Ahaz commanded Urijah the Kohen, saying, Upon the great altar you will burn the morning burnt offering and the evening grain offering, the king's burnt offering and his grain offering, with the burnt offering for of all the people in the land of the land and their grain offering and their drink offering also sprinkle on it all the blood of the burnt offering and all the blood of the sacrifices but the bronze altar will be for me to inquire by thus Urijah the Kohen did everything just as King Ahaz commanded then King Ahaz cut off the borders of the, st of the stands and removed the labor from them he also took down the sea from the bronze oxen that were under it and put it on the stone pavement. The covered passageway for Shabbat that they had built in the house, as well as the other outer entry for the king, he removed from the house of Adonai because of the king of Syria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? Then Ahaz slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Then his son Hezekiah became king in his place. Second Kings chapter 17. The Israelites are deported to Assyria. In the twelfth year of King Ahaz of Judah, Hoshea, son of Elah, became king in Samaria over Israel, and he reigned nine years. He did what was evil in Adonai's eyes, yet not as the kings of Israel who were before him. King Shalmaneser of Assyria marched against him, so Hoshea became his vassal, his vassal, and paid him a tribute. But the king of Assyria caught Hoshea conspiring, so he sent messengers to King So of Egypt. And had not paid the tribute to the king of Assyria as he had done every year. Therefore the king of Assyria seized him and put him in prison. And the king of Assyria invaded the entire country and marched up to Samaria and besieged it for three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria captured Samaria and deported the Israelite to Assyria. He placed them in Hala and Habor on the Gozan River and in the towns of the Medes. Medes. Now it was so because of the men of Israel had sinned against Adonai, their God, who brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods. And said they followed the customs of the nations whom Adonai had dispossessed before Benai Israel, which the kings of Israel practiced. Benai Israel secretly did things against Adonai, their God, that were not right. They built shrines for themselves in all their settlements, from watchtowers to fortified cities. And they set up pillars and Asherah poles for themselves on every high hill and under, uh, under every leafy tree. There they burnt incense in all the high places like the nations whom Adonai had driven out before them. So they did wicked things to provoke Adonai. They worshipped idols about which Adonai had said to them, You shall not do this thing. Yet Adonai has forewarned Israel and Judah by the hand of every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from all your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the Torah which I commanded. 
your fathers in which I sent to you by the hand of my servants of the prophets. Yet they would not listen, but stiffened their necks like their fathers who did not trust Adonai their God. So they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies that he testified against them. Instead they went after the futile things and became futile, following the nations that surrounded them, but whom Adonai had charged them not to emulate. So they abandoned all the mitzvah of Adonai their God. So they made for themselves molten... What did they make for themselves? They made for themselves multiple images, two calves, and made an Asher pole, and bowed down to all the hosts of heavens and worshipped Baal. Dang, it's been crazy. And they made their sons and daughters pass through the fire, practice divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in Adonai's eyes to provoke him. So Adonai became very angry with Israel and banished them from his presence. There was none left but the tribe of Judah alone. Even Judah did not keep the mitzvah of Adonai their God, but followed the customs which Israel had practiced. So Adonai spurned all the descendants of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of the plunderers until he had cast them out of his sight. When he had torn Israel from the house of David, they made Jeroboam son of Nebat king. Then Jeroboam drew Israel away from the following Adonai and made them commit to a great sin. The men of Israel kept walking in all the sins that Jeroboam committed. They did not turn away from them until Adonai banished Israel from his presence as he spoke by the hand of all his servants, the prophets. So Israel had been exiled from their own land to Assyria to this day, origins of the Samaritans. Then the king of Assyria had brought people from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamath, Sepharvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the men of Israel. So they possessed Samaria and settled in its cities. When they first began dwelling there, they did not fear Adonai, so Adonai sent lions among them, which killed some of them. Then they spoke to the king of Assyria, saying, And the nations that you deported and resettled in the towns of Samaria do not know the requirements of the God of the land. Therefore he has sent lions among them, and behold, they are killing them, because they don't know the requirement of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Send there one of the Kohanim who you have exiled from there. Let them go and live there, and teach them the requirement of God the of the God of the land. So one of the Gohanim that had been deported from Samaria came and lived in Bethel and taught them how they should fear Adonai. However, every nation kept making its own gods and put them in the shrines of the high places that the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities where they settled. So the people of Babylon made Sukkoth Benoth, the people of Kuth made Nergal, the people of Hamath made Ashima, the Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Sepharvites burned their children in the fire to Adramalek and Anamalek, the gods of Sepharvaim. So they feared Adonai, while they appointed them for appointed for themselves from among themselves priests of the shrines who officiated for them in the shrines of the high places. They continued to fear Adonai, but worship their own gods after the custom of the nations from which they had been deported. Up to this day, they follow their former customs, nor do they. F- Fear Adonai, or follow the statutes, the ordinances, the Torah, or the mitzvot that Adonai commanded for the children of Jacob, whom he had renamed Israel. With them, Adonai had made a covenant and charged them, saying, You will not fear other gods, or bow down to them, or serve them, or sacrifice to them, but only Adonai, who brought you up from the land of Egypt with great power and with an outstretched arm, him will fear you. Him you will you fear. And to him will you bow down, and to him will you sacrifice. The statutes and the ordinances and the Torah and the mitzvah which he wrote for you, you will take care to do all the time. You are not to fear other gods. The covenant that I have made with you, you will not forget, nor will you fear other gods. But Adonai, your God, will you fear. Then he will deliver you from the hand of all your enemies. Yet they did not listen, but they continued their form. Their practices, while the nations feared Adonai, they also worshipped their idols, their children and their grandchildren do as their fathers did to this day. Second Kings chapter 18, Righteous King Hezekiah. Now it was in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, the king of Israel, that Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abi, daughter of Zechariah. He did what was right in Adonai's eyes, according to all his ancestors David had done. He removed the high places, smashed the pillars, and cut down the Asherah poles. He also broke into pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made for up to those days when Israel was still burning incense to it. It was called Nehushtan. He trusted in Adonai, the God of Israel. Indeed, none of all the kings of Judah after him was like him, and none before him. For he clung to Adonai. He did not turn away from them following him, but kept his mitzvah, which Adonai had commanded Moses. So Adonai was with him. Wherever he went, he prospered. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. He defeated the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territories, from watchtower to fortified city. Now it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, the king of Elah of Israel, that King Ashal Manah, 
Sennacherib of Assyria marched against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end of the three years, they captured it. So Samaria was captured in the sixth year of Hezekiah, which was the ninth year of King Koshea of Israel. The king of Assyria deported Israel to Assyria and placed them in Hala and Habor and the Gozan River and the towns of the Medes. For they had not listened to the voice of Adonai, of Adonai their God, but transgressed his covenant. All that Moses, the servant of Adonai, had commanded, they neither listened nor did it. Proud... Sennacherib challenges Hezekiah. Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, King Sennacherib of Assyria marched against all the fortified towns of Judah and seized them. So King Hezekiah of Judah sent word to the king of Assyria at Lachish, saying, or Lachish, saying, I have done wrong. Withdraw from me. Whatever you impose on me, I will bear. So the king of Assyria imposed on King Hezekiah of Judah 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Then Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of Adonai, as well as the treasures of the royal palace. At that time, Hezekiah stripped off the gold from the doors of the temple of Adonai and from the doorpost the king Hezekiah of Judah had overlaid and gave them to the king of Assyria. Then the king of Assyria sent Tartan, the Rab Sedis, and the Rab Shake from Lachish with a great army to King Hezekiah in Jerusalem. So they went up and arrived at Jerusalem. Now when they arrived, they stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is on the highway of the foolish field. When they had called to the king, Eli- El- Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the royal palace, Shebna the scribe, and Joah, Joa, the son of Asaph the recorder, came out to them. So Rab Shekah, said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, What is the confidence you relied on? You say you have a plan and military force for the battle, but they are only words of a lip. Who do you rely on now, so that you have rebelled against me? Behold, you rely on the splintered reed as a staff to Egypt. If a man leans on it, it will go into the palm of his hand and pierce it. Thus Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, We trust in Adonai our God, is it not he who's in whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has removed and then said to Judah and Jerusalem, you must worship before this altar in Jerusalem. So now make a bargain with my master, the king of Assyria. I'll give you 2,000 horses if you could put riders of your own on them. So how can you repulse a single lieutenant, at least of my master ser- the least of my master's servants? Yes, you're relying on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen. Moreover, have I now come up against this land to destroy it without Adonai's approval? Adonai has said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Then Haliakim and Shebna and Joah said to the Rabshakeh, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it. Don't speak to us in the language of the Jews when the people on the walls are listening. But the Rabshakeh said to them, Has my master sent me only to your master and to you to speak these words, and not to the men who sit on the wall who will eat their own waste and drink their own urine with you? Then the Rabshakeh said, and cried with a loud voice in the language of the Jews, and said, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Don't let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you out of my hand. Nor let Hezekiah persuade you to trust in Adonai by saying, Adonai will surely deliver us. The city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Don't listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, Make peace with me and come out to me then everyone will eat from his own vine and fig tree and everyone will drink water from his own cistern until i come and take you away to a land like your own land a land of grain and wine a land of bread and vineyards a land of olive oil and honey that you may live and not die so don't listen to hezekiah when he misleads you by saying adonai will deliver us have any gods of the nations delivered his hand his land from the hand of the king of assyria where are the gods of hamath and arpad where are the gods of uh sephavarim hina and eva have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among all the gods of the lands have delivered their country out of my hand? So will Adonai deliver Jerusalem from my hand? But the people were silent and did not answer him a word. For the king's commandment was, do not answer him. Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, Hilkiah who was in charge of the palace, Shebna the scribe, and Joha, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him the words of Rabshakeh. Uh, Second Kings chapter 19, Hezekiah's cry of desperation. When King Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went to the house of Adonai. Then he sent Eliakim, who was in charge of the palace, Shebna the scribe, and the senior Kohanim, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, son of Amos. Uh, then they said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, 
This day is a day of distress, rebuke and contempt, for the children have come to the point of birth, and there is no strength for giving birth. Perhaps Adonai your God, hearing all the words of the Rab Shekah, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to mock the living God, will rebuke the words of which Adonai your God has heard, so offer a prayer for the remnant that is left. When the officials of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Thus you will say to your master, Thus says Adonai, Do not be afraid of the words you have heard, with which the boys of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I am putting a spirit in him, and he will hear a rumor and return to his own country, then I will make him fall by the sword in his own land. Then the Rab Shakeh returned and found the king of Assyria fighting against Libna, for he had heard that he had written from Lachish. Now he heard a report of Turka, king of Ethiopia, Ethiopia, saying, Behold, he has come out to fight against you. When he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus will you speak to king Hezekiah of Judah, saying, Do not let your God, in whom you trust, deceive you, saying, Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the king of Assyria has done to all lands, utterly destroying them, so will you be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered those of my fathers destroyed, Gozan, Haran, Rezef, and the children of Eden, who were in Tel Asar? Where is the king of Hamath, or the king of Arpad, or the king of the city of the Sepharvayim, or of Hina, or of Eva? Then Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Then Hezekiah went up to the house of Adonai and spread it before Adonai. Hezekiah prayed before Adonai, saying, Adonai, God of Israel, who is enthroned upon the cherubim, you are alone, our God, and are the kings, all the kingdoms of the earth. You made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, Adonai, and hear. Open your eyes, Adonai, and see. Listen to the words of Sennacherib that he has sent to mock the living God. Is it true, Adonai, the kings of Assyria have devastated the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire? For they were not gods, but the work of human hands, wood and stone, so they have destroyed them. Now, Adonai, our God, save us from his hand, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know you alone, that, that you alone, Adonai, are God. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent word to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says Adonai, God of Israel, because you prayed to me about King Sennacherib of Assyria, I have heard you. This is the word that Adonai has spoken about him. The virgin daughter of Zion will despise you and mock you. The daughter of Jerusalem will shake her head at you. Whom did you taunt and blaspheme? Against whom did you raise your voice and haughtily lift up your eyes against the Holy One of Israel? Through your servants you have blasphemed, my Lord, and said, With many chariots I have climbed to the heights of the mountains, to the remotest parts of Lebanon. I cut down all the tall cedars and choice cypress trees. I have gone into the harvest lodge, its thickest forest. I have dug wells and drunk foreign waters, and with the soles of my feet I dried up all the streams of Egypt. Have you not heard? I did it long ago. From ancient times I planned it, and now I have brought it to pass, that you should turn fortified cities into heaps of rubble. Their inhabitants are weak-handed, shattered, and ashamed. They are like the grass of the field and green herb, like grass on a roof scorched before it has grown up. But I know you're sitting down, you're going out, and you're coming in, and you're raging against me. Because you're raging against me, and your arrogance reached my ears, I will put my hook in your nose, and my bridle in your lips, and I will turn you back by the way you came. So this shall be a sign to you. This year you will eat what grows by itself, and the second year what springs from that. But the third year, you will sow, reap, plant vineyards, and eat their fruit. The surviving remnant of the house of Judah will take downward and bear fruit upward. For, for from Jerusalem, a remnant will go out, and survivors from Mount Zion. The zeal of Adonai Zavat will accomplish this. Therefore, thus says Adonai concerning the king of Assyria, he will not come into the city or shoot an arrow there or come before it with a shield to throw up a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came, by the same he will return, and he will not come into this city. It is a declaration of Adonai, for I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Then it came about that at night that the angel of Adonai went out and struck down 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. When the men arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So King Sennacherib of Assyria withdrew, went away, and returned home and stayed in Nineveh. One day, as he was worshipping in the house of his god Nisroch, his sons, Adramalek and Sarazer struck him down with the sword and escaped to the land of Ararat. Then his son Eshar Haddon became king in his place.